Excited to be here this morning. Are you guys ready to get started? So first of all, I want to say, I saw a lot of hands raised for those of you who are newbies, new to this conference. And I just want to instill, you've heard this morning of where this movement is going. You guys in this room are like the Navy SEALs. You have a special calling and a special training like me. And we are in the cutting edge, the forefront of where medicine is headed. So I just hope that you will take that seriously and uh, enjoy today, soak it up. You don't have to know everything. And today, this morning, as we start, I plan to blow your mind with the complexity and the interesting um, concept of environmental toxicity in the brain. But I want to start with story. Two thousand and one, I was a twenty five year old medical student, the prime of my life. You know, at that age, you really don't have any concept of mortality. And I remember finding a lump in my breast. I didn't think anything of it. I actually didn't have time to take care of it because you know how we are as busy third year medical students. But as the assist, as insistence of my physician and um, partner at the time, I had it checked out. And you all know where this is going. I had a biopsy. I remember sitting next to the radiologist. You remember in medical school when everything was learning opportunities? So my own mammogram and ultrasound was a learning opportunity. And I sat with the radiologist, my colleague and friend. And I remember looking over at him and he said, Jill, you know, this mammogram, if you were 55 years old, it's highly suspicious for malignancy, but you're 25. But I heard the tremor in his voice and I saw the fear in his eyes and I knew at that moment there was something more serious here. My surgeon, also my friend, called me two days after the biopsy, voice cracking. She said, Jill, I don't know how to tell you this. You have an invasive, aggressive, Grade three ductal carcinoma. You're 25. You need to fight this with your life. And so I did. I took nine months off of medical school, leave of absence, did three drug chemotherapy. I had the maximum cardiotoxic dose of epirubicin, then followed by six weeks of radiation. And after that, in 2002, the month of March, I was considered cured. But the story doesn't end there. I always joke I must be God's guinea pig to learn these concepts and understand them in a very real level because about six months later, I was having massive weight loss, diarrhea, bleeding, and pain, and I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Now, any of you who know the gut can actually make a connection between the toxic chemotherapy, creation of leaky gut, abnormal microbiome, and the development of Crohn's disease. And what I've done over the last 15 years is really dive deep into that connection. I came upon the specific carbohydrate diet. I changed my diet. I looked at the microbiome. And I'm today considered cured not only of cancer, but completely cured of Crohn's disease. Yes, praise God. So I am passionate about these topics on a whole different level because I've lived it and I've come to the other side. And I just have to tell you, people aren't always even ready to hear that there's a cure and there's a different way. I tweeted not too long ago on my Twitter account that, you know, there's a cure for Crohn's disease. Here's my story that I've cured my Crohn's. You would not believe the backlash I got of people saying there's no cure for Crohn's disease. What are you saying? I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm living proof. I had a biopsy proven Crohn's disease and I don't have it anymore. Um, so if that was the end of the story, that'd still be interesting, but there's more. I was going along happy, moved to Boulder in 2010 and started my functional medicine practice. Love what I'm doing, happy, healthy, running, active, no symptoms of Crohn's, no sign of cancer. And I shared an older office building with a beautiful colleague for several years. And after the Boulder floods in 2013, in the year of 2014, I started having shortness of breath. 